I want to share with you some concepts on branding your business for success. And the one thing that I want to impress upon you is that the, the topics that we're going to be talking about today are going to apply to you regardless of whether you are a home-based uh, business, a, an entrepreneur, own your own business, your own brick and, brick and mortar business, your own internet business, whether you work for a multinational corporation, whether you're a business owner or a business manager, director, supervisor, regardless, the concepts should apply. The key to the uh, topics that I want to discuss in the presentation is it has to be interactive. So I'm going to ask you questions. I'm going to encourage you to respond because without that, it kind of falls through. So let's start with what is branding? So branding is an essential marketing strategy. So if you're in business and you're out there to promote uh, your business and attract customers, you must be engaged in branding. So uh, what I want to impress upon you is that branding is something that you're supposed to be doing consciously. It's part of your defined marketing strategy. It is not advertising. I don't want you to confuse branding and advertising. Advertising is simply a subset of branding. But in order to understand that, we have to understand what is a brand. So here's where you start helping me out. What is a brand? Somebody help me out. Uh, I didn't ask you name a brand. I said, tell me what a brand is. Yes. I'm sorry. It's an identity. Absolutely. What else? Come on. You guys are all doing it every single day. Recognition. Recognition. Recognition of what? Of your name. What else? Of your product. What else? Okay. Your product. Your service. So basically, theoretically, a brand is a catalyst in defining and communicating the value proposition of your business, your company, your product, your service. This is the proverbial elevator speech, right? You should be able to communicate what it is that you are offering in 30 seconds or less, right? That is the value proposition. So if I'm talking to Holly and I say, Holly, what do you do? She says, I'm a car broker. I help you buy the car you want at the best possible price. That is her value proposition. How'd I do that? Very good. Very good. Okay. So, um, if, if uh, you're, there's a financial planner in the room, yes? Raise your hand. Thank you. What is your value proposition? Uh, to help uh, women financial... Uh, sorry. <laughs> you caught me on guard. Of course I did. Okay. So, your value proposition as a financial planner, as an example, is to increase a person's wealth and help them plan for their future. Yes or no? Yes. Okay, so just to give you an idea of what a value proposition is. A brand is the essence or a promise that a product, service, or company will be delivered or can be experienced by a customer, a client, or a consumer. So basically, if somebody is doing business with you, the, your brand is to them a verbal contract for all intents and purposes of what they can expect and what you are promising to deliver. So, for example, I own a restaurant. The, my value proposition is you will come in and you will enjoy your dining experience. That is what your expectation should be too when you come in, right? If you don't deliver that, then what happens? There's, the, there's a, an element of disappointment, right? And that affects your brand, agreed? Okay, so as an example, I went out, I bought a car. Holly was helping me uh, look for a car. We decided I wanted a uh, Toyota Camry as an example. Now, if I buy a Toyota Camry and my expectation is that it will perform better than the last car which I had, which may have been older, I'm probably going to be satisfied. The value proposition that Toyota puts out is you're going to have a maintenance-free vehicle that will give you satisfaction for a number of years. If I buy that vehicle and it performs like a Lexus, I am obviously satisfied. I have exceed, they've exceeded my expectations. When they fall short of my expectations, if I think it's going to perform like a Lexus and it doesn't because it's a Toyota, then we have what I call the expectations gap. So the, the challenge that these companies have is to communicate effectively what their value proposition to me is going to be so that I don't expect something that I'm not going to get. Everybody understand? So branding is therefore a personality that identifies a product, service, or company and how it relates to its constituencies. So for example, we are attaching a personality 
to the brand. It's not just a name. It's not just an image. It's not just a symbol. It's a personality that evolves around it. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you as we go. So the goal of a brand is to be a couple of things. Noticed, remembered, and desired. Everybody agree? So let's look at a couple of brands that we know. Everybody say they know most of these brands on the, on the screen? OK. And we all know them by the image that is projected here, right? But I'm going to demonstrate to you that these brands are, have created, have successfully created a recognizable identity. And the reason I've used recognizable there in multiple letters is to prove a point. Which brand does that? On who? Apple. Google, absolutely. Every single day. Not only does do Google do that, they randomize the colors and they randomize the images they project and yet, and they do that so effectively by the way that some people will go online just to see what Google looks like today. 365 days a year they project a different image. Right? And you'll go online to see what it is. And by the way, have they done that effectively? Yeah. Let me tell you how effective it is. Do you ever Yahoo anything on the internet? I know I don't. I Google something. Right? They have so effectively branded their name that they have transitioned their name into a verb. Right? Today, everybody Googles something, even if you're using a different search engine. Right? You can Google on AOL. So the point I'm trying to make here is that regardless of how your, if your brand is effective enough, if your brand is well communicated, it doesn't matter how it's presented. You're going to recognize it and you will attach a value to it. So let's talk about what constitutes a brand. Somebody help me out. What does a brand mean to you? What is a brand made of? A product, absolutely. A value, quality, what else? I'm sorry? It's you, it's absolutely, it's that personality. So let's talk about that. A brand can be a name or a word, an image or a logo, a person or a mascot, a slogan or a tagline, a product or a service, but ultimately it's a successful combination of all of these elements. Everybody agree? So let's take a look at some examples. These are some of the world's best known brands. Right? They're just a word, but to you, they automatically mean something. So take a look at these. Now, I purposely presented them in black and white on this slide. But yet, I bet you all know what color Allstate is. Who knows what color Allstate is? Blue and white, exactly. What color is Carnival? Red. What color is Avis? Red. So. The fact that they're, that they're in black and white has no impact on your ability to recognize them, right? Well, let me point something else out to you. There are 14 names on the screen, and I have materially changed seven of them. That is not the logo for Facebook. That is not the logo for Band-Aid. That is not the logo for Coach. And I can go on and on and on. There's seven of them. Seven out of 14 are completely, completely changed. It didn't affect you at all. You didn't even notice because the brand is so well embedded in your head. So here's, a, here's a, another subset, right? A, a brand is a logo or an image, right? Everybody recognize these? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now isn't it amazing how these logos or these images can evoke an emotion in you? It's not just recognizing the name of the company or associating the name of a company with the, with the name or with the image rather. It's the fact that they evoke an emotion. And I'm going to give you an example. Take the one on the top left. What brand is that? Disney. Disney. Everybody in the room knows that it's Disney. And yet, if you look at it, it's actually the simplest image on the screen. It's kind of a dumb image, actually, if you look at it. You know, really? That is probably the best known brand in the world. Right? You know it if you're 5 or 55 or 95. But yet, it as soon as you see it, evokes an emotion in you. What is that emotion? Fun. Fun. <laughs> yet, immediately, you know that. So we go across the screen. Let, let's look at the one in the middle. What brand is that? Mercedes. Mercedes. We all know it's Mercedes, even if we don't own one. So we either have one and are all annoyed that it's at the shop, or we wish to have one. <laughs> right? All said. Right. But 
What does that image, what does that logo convey to you? One word. Luxury, right? Prestige, right? What's it? Success. Absolutely. Isn't that amazing? Let's keep going all the way to the top far right. What is that logo? Playboy. And what if, see, I didn't, even, I didn't even get to ask the question. She's already thinking of sex, right? So as you can see, a logo or an image is a very powerful part of your brand. Let's look at people or mascots as a brand. So the point we're trying to make here is that you can brand either yourself, and somebody said that earlier, you brand yourself either as a personality or you end up being the representative of a company. So, I mean, we all know what uh, the Geico representative is, right? Yeah. yeah, when I did this presentation in front of Allstate, they got very upset with me. <laughs> what about the guy in the bottom right? Planters Peanuts, right? Is there anybody on the screen that you do not recognize? That wrestler, that wrestler guy, but yet you know he's a wrestler, right? Hulk Hogan. Right? So here, but here's, right, Michelin Man. So you're recognizing them all. But here's, again, I want to point out to you that these, all of these images are going to, in, in, create an emotion or evoke an emotion in you that pertains to their product. So for example, you talked about the Michelin man, right? What kind of emotion does that attach to their product, right? What does Michelin promote? Safety, right? They're all about safety. Um, you know, you've got uh, Princess Diana there, right? Now, in the case of Princess Diana, she's not representing a product. What did she represent? Was that? Well, royalty, but what was she really promoting? Charities. Charities, philanthropy, right? So when you look at these at these images, you can see that there are people on these on these uh, on the slide that are either going to like Mother Teresa or Princess Diana. They are going to cause you to give to their cause. They're not selling a product; they're selling a cause, right? Or you've got somebody like Donald Trump who you love to hate so much you'll watch his show. <laughs> what do you think he's selling? So. Right, look at him. I hate him, she says. Of course you hate him. That's the whole object. He's selling himself. He's making, he's making himself so hateable that you like to watch his show. So then, then there are slogans and taglines as a brand. Do you recognize all of these? Right? Is there anyone on there that you don't recognize? How famous is America runs on Duncan? Right? We know that, right? So as soon as we see it, if in fact, I bet you if I, if I didn't even have the words on there, under there, you would have been able to put that together because you have seen it so many times on that cup that you get at the drive-thru. You know, right in the middle um, is a very interesting one. It says, uh, Coke is the real thing. I own a restaurant. Do you know that nobody ever, ever walks into our restaurant and orders a Pepsi, including the Pepsi drinkers? <laughs> ever. Doesn't happen. Why? Because Coke is the real thing. Because they've driven it into your head to the point where you're almost embarrassed to ask for a Pepsi. Okay. What about a product or a brand being a recognizable image representing the company? The car in the middle is certainly not the best car in the world, but it is the most recognizable car in the world, right? It hasn't changed in, I don't know, I, 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 1960, okay, I wasn't even around, okay? So it's very recognizable and they don't change it for a reason. They'll change the interior, they won't change the exterior. What about that motorcycle? What brand is that? Harley, you know what's really interesting? I went out of my way to get an image of a motorcycle that wasn't a Harley, just to prove my point. Because Harley has done such a great job of building their brand. They were on the verge of bankruptcy, they completely turned around the brand, they revitalized it to the point where every motorcycle you see, you think is a Harley. I ride a Honda and I can tell you, I get stopped all the time, people go, wow, that's a great looking Harley. I go, sure is, especially when you look at the price tag. Okay, let's look at the Corona bottle. 
Let's look at the Coke bottle. If I was to black out those images so that you couldn't see them, if you just saw the outline of those bottles, would you know what they were? Yeah. Yeah. I bet so. In particular, the Coke bottle. Yeah. Right? You don't even need to see the ridges. It's just that curvature, and you know what it is. The others, obviously, you know haagen probably. If I asked you to name a brand of ice cream, most of you would have come up with haagen -Dazs just because of their reputation. Um, so this is my, sh you know, my shameless plug, but here's, here's my effort to build a brand for our restaurant where we have a mascot, we have a product, we have a tagline, we have a personality attached to our staff. This is exactly what you are going to have to do for your business. Because at the end of the day, each one of these little elements of your brand speaks to some people, but not others. Some people may look at my you know, belly dancer and go, oh my God, she's gorgeous. I'm going to that restaurant. And others may go, oh, I can't take my children there. I can't take my husband there. <laughs> right? The point is, so you have to have enough elements in your branding portfolio to make it sufficiently interesting to be memorable for your customers. But branding is not limited to for-profit organizations. Here's a slide of a variety of brands that are all not-for-profit organizations. Is it fair to say you recognize them all? Okay, so they had to spend a lot of time and effort to build these brands in order to get you to donate or contribute or support their cause, right? Let's see, you know, each one of them evokes an emotion in you. If you look at the panda and you're an animal lover, you're going to donate to which organization? Wildlife. World Wildlife Society. If you've, got, if you've ever had somebody who needed an operation and, a, and, and depended on a, a blood transfusion for their life, you know, for survival, you would have donated to which organization on the screen? The Red Cross. Now just to demonstrate to you that emotion, not all emotions are love, kind of emotions. Anybody recognize the one in the top, in the top right of the slide? No. IRS. IRS, very good. Now, I can assure you the IRS is not trying to get an emotion that says, oh, I really love the IRS, I'm going to support that cause. That's a scare tactic. That is not an image that evokes you know, a positive emotion, but nevertheless, it's recognizable. Let's talk about, you know, so we, 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 right, so we've talked about various elements of branding. Let's talk about the concept of branding locally versus globally. The point I'm trying to make here is that the, the concepts are universal. The top ad over there, is that local or universal? Global, right? How do you know that? Lenin. Well, we certainly wouldn't be selling a lot of Coke in the United States if we put a picture of Lenin up there, right? And the, lo the bottom one is very well known locally, right? Yeah. Especially in this room, right? So, the point is, if you look at it, each one of them is using a consistent color, a, a, a regular repeating tagline, and they're making a point in driving their product into your, the forefront of your brain, which is... Coke is either the real thing or your wife is hot and we're the ones to fix it. Well, I, I, I won't go there. So, the, basically the logo is ultimately just a part of branding. It's the tip of the iceberg, so to speak, right? It's part of a strategy and a series of steps and a well thought out plan that helps you build the brand of your business and the image that it portrays. So, in building your brand, you need the following. The brand from inception needs to be conceived, developed, built, cultivated, personalized, differentiated, and ultimately effectively communicated to your target market. You need all of these elements. It can't be just one. Let me give you some examples. Here are a couple of AC repairmen. Do you agree that both of them exist? You've seen them both, right? All right, let me ask you something. 
Which one would you rather have come to your home? And I'm going to do this by a show of hands. Who wants brand A? Who wants brand B? Okay. Interestingly, I'm, I'm surprised only one hand said they want brand A, because I think people kind of hesitate to say, oh, no, I want the professional. But the reality is there is a market for both of them. Right? And I bet you, if you're honest with yourself, you'll acknowledge that you've used both of them. Right? So the point is, you, you want to build a brand, and the reason you are building a brand is because you want to create some monetary value and a market value for your brand. Brands are not just names and they're not just images. There is a value attached to these brands. Did everybody recently hear about Hostess going out of business? Yeah. What is the biggest brand that they had? Twinkie. 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 And you all know the brand, but that company's out of business. Now what's going to happen? Buy Somebody is buying that brand. And that brand, that brand is now being hawked around the world, not just in the United States, not just in Europe. It's being hawked around the world for the highest price for what? For the brand. Right? Because theoretically, even if they have no sales, there is a value to the, to the fact that the brand is recognizable. So, let me prove that point to you. Here's a list of the top 10 most valuable brands in the world. What's the most valuable brand in the world as of 2011? Apple. Right? Are there any names there you don't recognize? Number nine is hard to read. It's China Mobile. Well, I mean, it makes sense. You got a billion cellular phones, right? So look at, look at the numbers here. Apple in 2011 was worth $153 billion. Okay, those numbers are in millions. So $153 billion. And by the way, have they sold any really impressive products since 2011? Come on. Since 2011, when did iPhone 5 come out? just came out, right? So their value is clearly even larger. The point I'm trying to make is, if you do a really good job, you can add value to your brand. And it doesn't matter if that brand is owned by somebody else and you work for them, or if you yourself are that brand. So what's the importance of branding? Well, branding is going to help you build uh, an awareness of your business, an understanding of your product or value proposition, it allows customers to consider doing business with you. It will drive sales. And ultimately, and most importantly, it will create customer loyalty. So therefore, we need to develop various branding strategies to effectively achieve that objective. In fact, what are you all doing in this room today? Didn't you all stand up here and introduce yourselves one at a time? Why? Networking, you're branding yourselves, right? And you do that either here or at the Chamber of Commerce or some other professional networking association, and you do it every time you encounter a customer. How many of you have said to a customer, you know, I would really appreciate a referral? Right? We thrive on referrals. Why? Two reasons. They are free, and that is the best source of new business. I can tell you at my restaurant, I tell people all the time, don't tell me how great we are, please tell all your friends. Right? That's the most important. So strategic objectives to bring, build brand equity. So brand equity is the core, is the essence of what you're trying to achieve. The value drivers that contribute to brand equity, that is to monetary value of your brand, are the association between your brand and your company, the familiarity or popularity of your brand, the awareness of your brand, the public awareness of your brand, its availability. You know, Juliana was just saying, hey, listen, I'm a representative of a, of a company, but my company is global, maybe even international. The customer's preference of your brand versus another brand. The loyalty demonstrated by your customers towards your brand. In other words, are they one-time customers or do they keep coming back? And they could demonstrate their loyalty by referring people to you. And the image or personality associated with your brand. In other words, is it a positive image or a negative image? So the branding mantra. This is everything you have to be to be a successful brand. You got to be original, different, innovative, authentic, passionate. You got to be yourself. You got to be visible. You got to be everywhere. 
Got to be exciting, remarkable, memorable, and available. But most importantly, you have to be consistent in the message that you are conveying to your customers or to your target market. If you kind of flip-flop all over the place, you're going to confuse your customers and they won't know if you're A or B. You got to decide which niche you're going after. So look, let's look at elements of an effective brand. In order to be an effective brand, you have to identify the brand that you want to represent, select the means by which you want it represented, effectively communicate that message to the market, and ultimately differentiate yourself from your competitors. How many of you are doing this on a regular basis? Come on, I should see more hands than that. At least you're doing some of this, yeah. right? So some of you, as I'm going through this, you'd be going, yep, 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 oh, uh, oh, <laughs> right? So what do we want to achieve? Well, we want our customers to feel our brand. We want our customers to identify with our brand, or we want our customers to actually be able to make an association between our brand and our value proposition. How many of you think that your customers know enough about you and your brand to be able to describe your brand for you? That's good. You got hands in the room. Listen, I don't know that financial planner, but I sure know what her value proposition is, because if it's not what I said it was, we've got a problem, right? Let me give you an example. I, I, uh, I have nitrogen tires on my car, and so because of the cold air, the tire pressure dropped, and I had to go get you know, my tires, you know, pumped up. So I'm standing at the Al Hendrickson Toyota dealership while they're pumping the air in my tires. And right in front of the service bay is this huge sign that says, Al cares. I mean, I was so mo moved by that sign, I had to take a picture of it. Now, I, I have no choice. Every car that comes into that bay stares at that sign. They have no choice. But what is it conveying to me about the owner of that dealership? that he cares, right? And do I want to do business with somebody like that? How many times have you said to your customer, do business with me because, because I care, because I'll take better care of you, because I'll give you better customer service? We all have a because, right? It's part of our value proposition. But I can tell you that when I saw that, it reinforced my purchase decision. So ultimately, you want to personalize your brand so that your brand sits on the forefront of your customers' minds. In other words, if I am you know, suddenly having vision problems, I want to run to City Eye Care and get my eyes checked because they've embedded that in my mind, right? I don't wear glasses, but I sure know where to go. So the same thing happens to you. If I want to buy a car, I know where to go, right? But in order to achieve that, you have to think different to be different. Who does that better than anyone else in the world? Who? Absolutely. See, you knew. And I'll demonstrate it to you. How many of you have an Apple product? Look, at, I should have said how many don't. I would have been able to count the hands. OK, they do it better than anybody. So structuring the creation of a brand. You have to start with knowing who you are. You develop a core message that you want to send to your customers or prospective customers. You target those messages to them. You create a look and feel for your business that you are comfortable with and that will hopefully attract a subset of the potential market. And then ultimately, you embed that in a logo that hopefully conveys what you're about. So you have to start branding internally. Unfortunately, a lot of people make the mistake and they say, OK, I'm in business. I'm just going to go promote. But they haven't figured themselves out yet. You've got to start internally. You start with a strategic purpose. What am I all about? What is my business proposition? What is my business plan? What are our set of values? What do we want to convey to our customers? What is our internal belief system? And be, you better believe that everybody in your office has to subscribe to it. You have to create a cor corporate culture that everybody <coughs> participates in and buys in. You know, we all talk about drinking from the proverbial Kool-Aid, right? This is it. You have to create a desirable public image, right? 
nobody is going to want to do business with you if you know, you're not conveying a, a desirable public image. You have to come up with innovative ideas because otherwise you're just creating something that somebody else has already done. And most importantly, you have to communicate that effectively to the market. So, this is kind of a recap. Brand drivers. We talked about the fact that you have to create awareness. You have to create a differentiation between you and somebody else. You have to evoke emotion because at the end of the day, most people buy emotionally no matter what they buy, right? I mean, I'm staring at a room full of ladies, right? Am I right or right? <laughs> and, and that will ultimately create value in your brand. But you have to do more than just create a brand that is for the business. You have to create brand for yourself. Somebody said that earlier, and that's very true. And here's a whole slew of examples. Do we have an accountant in the room? Okay, we have three of them. So here's, do we have, and we have a financial planner. Now, if, if I've entrusted my business or my personal finances to an accountant or a financial planner, and they've done a great job, and I trust them implicitly, and they switch from their company to another firm, am I staying with their old company, or am I following them? Absolutely, right? Because who gave me that value, the company, or the representative, the representative. but we're correct. And they've conveyed that message to me. And that goes for the same thing, a, a doctor versus a hospital. I, I recently had a surgery. I wasn't looking at the hospital. I was looking at the doctor. I'm not getting much from the hospital. You know, I, they're all about the same. Banker versus the bank, right? We will follow our banker if they've treated us well. Uh, agent, uh, insurance agent versus carrier. Do we have an insurance agent in the room? There you go. Realtor versus broker. Any realtors in the room? There we go. Trainer versus gym, nail tech versus, oh, ladies. How many of you are gonna follow your nail tech regardless of where she goes? Come on, easy one, right? And hairstylist? Do you care what chair you sit in or do you care who's handling your hair? You get my message. So, you're branding yourself. Right? People do business with people they know, like, and trust. So you have to create a persona for yourself and for your business. And in order to do so, above all else, you must walk the talk. If you say, I'm going to do something, you do it. You have to be consistent. You have to be reliable. You build a track record. You build a book of business. And you deliver on your value proposition. There are a myriad of branding opportunities. I, I won't even go into all of them. You probably know what they are. But what's the, what's the easiest way to brand your product or your, your person? Internet, absolutely. Social media. So here's a bunch of reasons why you should be using social media. 58% of Facebook users have liked a brand. 39% have tweeted about it. 41% have actually liked it, linked it, bought it on the internet, right? And yet, they've personalized their product on something as inanimate as the internet. A website. Every single one of you should have an effective website. And let me tell you what an effective website is. I'm using my own as an example, but for a specific reason. You'll see the logo. You'll see a message from us about us. You'll see a picture of our staff. Are we personalizing? Absolutely. And there's not a single picture of food up there. You gotta go several pages before you find that because I'm trying to personalize the business. But most importantly, see the, the reservations link is a call to action. You should all have one of those. Maybe a purchase uh, mode or a, a shopping cart or whatever it is that your business needs. Branding is recognizable in, the, in various formats if you do it effectively. We all know the Apple brand and we don't care what it looks like. We've established that earlier, correct? So we've done the same thing. Um, in the top left example, we, in the month of October, we wanted to support the uh, concept of breast cancer awareness. So what we do, we told our graphics designer, turn our, lo our logo into pink, add a pink ribbon, and we'll donate a portion of proceeds to a breast cancer foundation. Now, if um, look at all the women in the room. If you see that, does that create some sort of emotion on your part? Absolutely. Are you going to come out and support our brand? Absolutely. The other important thing is, you've spent all that time, money, and effort 
to build your brand, now you, buy, you have to protect your brand. Because intellectual property has quantifiable, measurable, and marketable value. We said that. You can sell it. But you can't sell it if you didn't protect it. So you want to create a defensible corporate brand and geographic market and register your intellectual property with the United States Patent and Trademark Office so that you can ultimately enforce your rights. Uh, I've just given you an example here. Mythos is just one name, and I've got 20 domains that we own to protect that name. We build, it, we build a defensible market around it. I don't want somebody coming along and go, okay, well, he's Mythos. I'm going to be Mythos Coral Springs. No, no, no. I own that one. I, I, I'll do Mythos to go. No, no, no. I own that one. Right? I'm protecting my intellectual property. And here's why. This is a Facebook image of a restaurant in Czechoslovakia that stole our logo. This is real. They took our logo, they put it on their restaurant, they put it on their Facebook page, and they said, here we go, we're Mythos. You know, I spent a lot of time, money, and effort building that. They even went so far as to put it on their signage. Now, they spent a lot of money on that signage, right? Can you imagine how I felt when I found this? <laughs> so, uh, they're in Czechoslovakia. Now, to be honest, I don't have a whole bunch of rights in Czechoslovakia, but I sent them a cease and desist letter. And you know what they said to me? They sent us an, a letter back apologizing, and they said, um, we paid a graphics designer to come up with a logo for us. Our restaurant is called Mythos Taverna. We paid a graphics designer to come up with a logo. They presented this logo. We loved it, and we adopted it, and made signage. So it was the graphics designer who stole the logo. A lazy graphics designer. Look at how much money they spent. They've got more images of my logo on their restaurant than I do. <laughs> right? Shocking, but they did it. So the, uh, the moral of the story is learn to monetize your brand and build brand equity because ultimately it will lead to an increase in your business. Thank you. We would like to present you with this certificate and thank you. Can we thank get you. another round of applause? Because yes. that yes. is absolutely amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Great much. Time. Excellent. Thanks.